Thanks for joining us on National Focus. I'm Kredisha St. Louis. Coming up, no social programs will be affected in the 2015-2016 budget. The health minister gives the status updates of the island's health facilities and the Roosevelt Scarred administration continues to take action to improve the island's tourism industry. Details of our headline stories and more after this. Dominica is blessed with an abundance of water, but getting it to your home is an expensive venture. You have a responsibility to conserve water, to use it wisely. Remember the old adage, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. Think water, think life. Thanks for staying with us. Social programs initiated by the Roosevelt Scarlet administration will continue in the 2015-2016 financial year. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Scarlet confirmed this during a press conference at the Ministry of Finance conference room on Tuesday. The Dominica leader explained that the programs have had a major positive impact on the lives of nationals across the country. You will not see any change in the government's social programs. No social program will be affected, not one. Not the school transfer grant, the 70 plus, the allowance we give to people 70 and over will, will maintain. Um, that is costing some money, but it's a commitment we made to the senior citizens of Dominica. Um, I believe we pay out every month in excess of $400,000 um, to people 70 and over. Um, we We'll maintain the school transportation program for secondary and primary school students. We will maintain the public, um, public assistance program. The Honorable Prime Minister also revealed the plans to improve the DLP's flagship social program, Yes We Care. We are looking at ways that we can even improve on the delivery of services to the senior citizens on the Yes We Care program. Having done a review of it, um, there will be some changes made, but changes to enhance the program, um, not in any way to affect it negatively, but to enhance the program. When a newly installed health minister, Dr. Kenneth Daru, began his term in office, he started off by visiting health facilities in each health district on the island. That complete, the Honorable Minister is now reporting his findings from those tours, as well as updates on the status of the island's three hospitals. Plans for the new Princess Margaret Hospital are currently in advanced stages. I know that um, we, we, the, the country had been promised a new hospital, worked to have begun in the first quarter of, of, of 2015. And uh, we're not going to shy away from this, it has been on the public record. Um, but since taking over the reins as the new Minister of Health, I felt it necessary to, to make sure that we get this very, very important project, get it right. Um, because a new hospital doesn't come every year, need every decade, maybe every century. Mm -hmm. Our current hospital is probably over half a century old. Yes. So after reviewing, um, after reviewing all the documents, I'm um, at the project brief, as it's called, the project folder. Um, we felt that there were certain um, certain changes, additions that was critical. The minister revealed that some of the amendments to the plans involve a suitable ward placement, increased pharmacy space, an office for the health information unit, an infection control unit, and geography space, and others. Honorable Daru emphasizes that while these adjustments are resulting in delays, it is nonetheless important that every detail receives adequate attention. We did not want just, as I said, just a... Uh, uh a new infrastructure. I want it to be functional, something that both the Chinese government, the uh, the, the grantors, and ourselves as grantees, the project that both of us could be could be proud of. So I say all this to say that since then we've we've, we've communicated that to them as to some of the changes or additions we felt were necessary um, for for this new hospital to be fully functional. We living in 2015, people. Um, They've gotten back to us as to their suggestions as to, yes, this can be done, as to, yes, this can be done, but in such a way. And right now, we're in the process of just of, 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 of reviewing. Further, the minister says, government is wisely consulting with other experienced partners. 
We also sought um, outside outside um, advice from from UNOPS, United Nations Office Office for Project Services, um, from with the help of our friends from PAHO. They also came in, took a look at the plans, and advised us accordingly. So we felt that that's critical that we address some of these concerns that we mentioned, both by the users, meaning our health practitioners here, the, the people who are going to use the hospital, and also the experts from the from the outside. So this is where we are now. Meanwhile, the Marigot Hospital continues to be another subject of government's attention in the coming weeks. Building a new, Mar a new hospital at Marigot is still on the government. Um, it's still a policy decision that the government has undertaken. If you look at the Labour Party administration manifesto, that a new hospital for Marigot is to be built um, for a number of reasons. The main one, of course, being the, the location, um, the current airport, and even the, the, the proposed site is going to be in that part of the, of the new airport, is going to be in that part of the country. So a new hospital for Marigot is still on the cards. Um, however, of course, with the advent of the new PMH, you would understand the logistical nightmare that would create in terms of delivery of services of trying to build the main hospital and a, and a Mary, uh, hospital at Marigot at the very same time. It is important that health centers, including the Marigot and Portsmouth hospitals, be poised to continue proper and uninterrupted health care delivery when constructions begin on the new hospital in Goodwill. This is why the necessary steps will be taken to ensure that the quality of service is unimpeded at other health facilities, including Marigot. We are saying that um, right now what we are in the process of doing in Marigot is to improve on what we have for now. We are looking at um, possible options. I've been met with the Marigot Health Team during my district visit. The Marigot Health Team, the district health team rather, of Marigot um, would have put forward um, certain um, potential areas, um, sites for us. So we are looking at the pros and cons of each site and hopefully be able to report to you in the next few weeks. In fact, a technical team was put together between the Ministry of Health and Public Works mm -hmm. to look at the pros and cons, estimate figures as to the v every possible um, location, whether we improve the current one. Of course, the integrity, structural integrity of the current building would have to be assessed, and then we will get back to you as soon as a decision is taken as to where the Marigot um, Health Center or hospital is going to be located, meaning intermittent on a temporary basis until such time as we, 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 we build a new hospital in Marigot. In Portsmouth, the Rotary Club has agreed to make necessary improvements to the Reginald Fitzroy Amor Hospital. Other arrangements are also in place for medical services in the north. We'll also be in discussions with Ross University, also part of the Labour Party manifesto, if you go for the manifesto, discussions with Ross into the conversion of Portsmouth into a more, more clinical, um, clinical student-friendly um, and, of course, in, um, was hopefully, reciprocal improved services, medical services in the Portsmouth, in the Portsmouth Hospital. In more news, the Roosevelt Skerritt administration continues to take action to improve the island's tourism industry. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt informed the media on Tuesday that 14 decisions have been taken by cabinet related to investments in tourism. The Dominica leader noted that many of those decisions were recommended by the Dominica Hotel Tourism Association. They indicated to us what are some of the things they believe that the actions the government can take that would um, assist those who are already in the, in, uh, have investments on the ground in Dominica, but those who would like to um, have new investments. So f obviously those will require uh, amendments to existing legislation and in some cases also um, bringing new legislation to address some of those issues. Um, for example, we'll be removing VAT on, on um, complementary rooms, we'll be removing VAT on, on um, meals to staff. That, that's, that was a major talking point um, from the DHTA, those two points. But there are a number of other more profound um, actions that we've taken, and those will go to the parliament. Um, I'm hoping that we are, we are going to on May 27, but because of the of some challenges in Aegis Chambers, we'll go in June to to, to to amend the legislation to give effect to those to those um, decisions and so. On. So that'll be done even before the, the budget is, is is passed and so on. You're watching National Focus. Still to come, Dominicans will soon have visa-free entry into the Schengen states. Did you know the Caribbean Court of Justice is two courts in one? The 
CCJ has two functions, an original jurisdiction, which deals with your right to move between CARICOM countries freely and your right to move your money and your business. This is the basis of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME, and the revised Treaty of Chagaramas, and an appellate jurisdiction to hear appeals from courts of those countries which decide to use it as their final court of appeal and no longer go to the Privy Council. All CARICOM member states who have signed the agreement establishing the CCJ are members of the CCJ. Welcome back. The European Union of Ministers have a set of dates for the signing of an agreement to allow Dominicans visas of free entry into the Schengen states. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerrid confirmed to reporters on Tuesday that the agreement will be signed on the 20th of May 2015. We are very grateful for the European Union for this um, decision. It will mean there for now, um, post the signing, that persons who are holding a Dominican passport, whether it is a diplomatic service or, reg or ordinary passport, would be able to travel to the Schengen states to France, to Spain, uh, to Greece, um, uh, and, and others without requiring a visa. I believe this is, this is great news for all Dominicans. Um, it would certainly um, facilitate um, our ability to travel. And um, we want to thank the, the European Union for, for, for this. And certainly it, 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 will, it demonstrates the, the level of relationship which we have with the European Union, um, the respect that they have. Because understand this, this visa, this visa free is not, has not been taken lightly by the European Union. They have to do their own in independent investigation and assessment of the security of your passport. They also ask questions about our economic synergy program. Um, look at the system, look at the due diligence process. So a number of variables were taken into consideration um, in granting us that um, opportunity to travel to the Schengen states uh, without requiring a visa. In more news, Dominica's chief medical officer, Dr. David Johnson, has announced that Dominica will benefit from a UK-based project that will improve health services here. At the Ministry of Health press conference last week, Dr. Johnson reported that Dominica plus three other OECS countries will improve their health services from the £8 million project. And one last thing in terms of closing, um, a lot of things are also happening in the, in the Ministry of Health. The Minister has spoken with regards to climate change and health and, for, and Mr. Mr. Geese as well. But I should also let you know, in terms of breaking news, that Dominica together with, 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 with um, three other OECS countries, that is um, St. Vincent, St. Lucia and Grenada, are, are going to benefit from a project referred to as a smart project. Uh, the project is worth or, or 8 million um, um, pounds and Dominique is actually starting to benefit of a, a one point, will be getting one point, uh, one and a half million um, dollars to, to actually benefit from the smart project. That smart project has three components. Um, one, in terms of disaster safety for healthcare facilities. Um, two, in terms of addressing the whole question of portable water and, and, and hygiene, and also looking at energy saving. And finally, this news time, the Ministry of Tourism's Community Tourism Expansion Program has reached the Margot constituency. Residents there can now benefit from a new tourism information center to promote the tourism aspects of their community. GIS's Atasia Flosak files this report. On Monday, May 11th, ribbons were cut and keys presented for the official opening of the Maragot Tourism Information Center. This will mean that people of the area will have an avenue through which they can be community employed in tourism. The Honorable Minister for Tourism, Senator Robert Tung, wants to enable more of these moves across the island for the purpose of both employment and tourism. He also says it is important to note tourism's linkages with other sectors, particularly the agriculture sector. We have the most amazing meals, and that is how we have to begin to tie in our tourism product with also our agricultural product. They really go hand in hand, because if I come to Dominica for one day, I must have breakfast, I must have lunch, I must have dinner. 
And normally that equates to about, I think about 20% of what people spend. So last year people spent $340 million in Dominica. If you take 20% of that, that's about 60 something million dollars. That technically goes right back into our agricultural um, produce. So there are many, many linkages um, to agriculture. Someone goes out to fish, he has to buy, he has to build a boat, he has to buy wood, he has to buy nets. He must purchase these things from somebody else. People must be employed to do that. Before he goes out into that ocean, he must um, top up his phone. He must buy water. So again, you can see economic activity going through all the, all, all, all the time. When he comes back from shore, he's going to sell the fish to either a restaurant or to a hotel or to an individual. If he sells it to a restaurant, it means you're going to have guests who are going to, want to, who are going to buy the food. In order to buy the food, what has to happen? Somebody has to prepare it. In order to prepare the food, somebody has to be employed. So again, employment. Tourism currently provides over 3,000 jobs across the country, with 1,800 being direct jobs. The facility will serve as the main administrative hub for the Margot Community Tourism Committee and will aid in promoting the tourism-related aspects of the community. It will also be used as a base for dispatching tours to attractions in the Margot area. Technical Officer in the Ministry of Tourism and Urban Renewal, George Maxwell, told of the conceptualization of this project in December 2013. Margot is predominantly a farming community, as we all know. However, with the decline in banana production in particular, it was felt that the tourism, tourism industry had to assist in picking up the slack as far as employment and revenue generation is concerned. It was also felt generally that with the WNT or the Whitey Kubuli National Trail segments 7 and 8 traversing the mountain or the mountainous interior of Marigot were valu valuable assets which can assist in the development of several businesses and provide employment for several persons in the community should be exploited fully. Construction of the multi-purpose tourism center was completed within six months. Maxwell says the center, once marketed and stocked adequately, can become a popular spot for visitors to and from the Douglas Charles Airport. Annie Edwards is coordinator of the Margot Community Tourism Committee, which has been active for five years. She says projects such as these pose tremendous benefits for communities like Margot. Coming from the um, project, the Sand Bay project, we gave a lot of capacity building and one of the things that was recognized at that um, the capacity building workshop was that there was no building in Margot where we could use as an outlet for craft. Most of the members, I can tell you, they are hardworking people. Most of them are women. All, of, all about, I would say, 50 or more than 50 are farmers, but they also do other things like craft, small business development and so on. It's a real dynamic group of ladies. This experience taught, us, taught me and the rest of us something that community tourism, it can grow, it can really get, but it's a lot of, it takes a lot of working with the members because, you know, a lot of, remember a lot of them have not been into traditional business, marketing and so on, they do the small things on the side. But um, the, the capacity built in, building has really helped. The process has not stopped with the ministry, and I really want to thank them for that, because that is something that's really critical, I think, with the community tourism. The groups, they take time. The people, you have to be really determined and persevere and so forth to really get them to remain focused. So it's not, you cannot just give them the facility, give them the funds and so on and leave them. I think they need that nurturing and so forth. So, that I'm very happy that the ministry is giving us the support in that respect. For locals like Claudia Alexander, Keturia Prosper and Ethel Thomas, the center will serve as another means of selling their produce. Thomas, who makes crochet clothes, believes there is a need for greater youth participation in community-based employment. Most of the people that gone before maybe had known and never teach so maybe if the youth get together, maybe the elders can teach them. So after, you know, or sometime now, if maybe they can do the dolls, maybe I get an order. I cannot maybe produce all, so I can maybe have somebody to help me with my... So I do the dolls, I do the skirts. 
Currently, the Tourism Ministry, along with the European Development Fund, is initiating similar tourism and employment projects in other communities like Kapushin, Loda and Tatan. Earlier this month, four boats and a floating jetty was handed over to Loda residents for their own community tourism program. It is agreed that it is now up to the people of Margot, Loda and other participating communities to use their resources for their benefit. I'm Tasia Flosak reporting for GIS News. Thank you, Tasia, for that report. And that's the English News. MacPherson said Luce is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à cette nouvelle en Creole. Non, moi, c'est MacPherson saint Louis. Premièrement, Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, qui a fait parole que le gouvernement Dominique a adressé cette situation au village Bawi, qui a concerné Chimé. Honorable Skerritt a fait parole pendant la conférence média jeudi. Le président Bawi a été bloqué Chimé là lundi, qui a protesté la condition à eux, mais le Premier ministre a dit que le a mis en place à adresser cette situation là. On a pris l'argent dans la European Union. On a une compagnie de mesures. Donc, si je ne suis pas là, je ne suis pas là. là qui travaille, qui est qui bénéficie. Mais le um, programme de l'European Union a pris longtemps. Et ça, comme je dit, il y a des chemins contre le chemin de Carou, le chemin de Salisbury Heights, le chemin de um, um, Heights en Calibiche. Nous avons fait cette intervention. Quand on a respecté l'European Union, et puis moi je suis là déjà, moi je suis allé en bas, moi je suis allé en bas, moi je suis allé en bas, et puis je me suis pensé à moi ça, à moi mai, nous devons commencer à ranger une des places en chemin pour faire le chemin la plus meilleur pour ces femmes. Quand on a respecté l'argent de la Hod, le projet de la Hod, l'European Union, qui a pris en route. C'est ça, c'est bien, moi j'ai dit publiquement, et puis. Parce que comment faire mon pas de ça Le Premier ministre a mentionné d'autres projets pour bâtir. Nous avons travaillé sur plusieurs projets, um, projets hôtel, um, c'est le GIP, un um, investment programme. Là. Comme ça, l'hôpital là, c'est um, chinois là, c'est chinois là, dit nous, ça a commencé chez moi là, um, um, l'hôpital là, en mois de juillet, um, nous avons eu um, um, break ground, comme on a dit, en mois de juillet. Um, yo, nous avons fait tout ça, nous avons fait tout ça, nous avons des difficultés et des plans là. Nous avons écrit, nous avons écrit, nous avons écrit. Donc nous avons eu des discussions entre nous et nous avons adressé les problèmes. Donc nous avons essayé de faire tout ça, nous avons fait pour commencer l'hôpital en mois de juillet. Puis c'est un bon, c'est un important, un projet très important. Puis c'est quoi qu'on sait. L'hôpital à présent, il n'y a pas de pièce. C'est notre là, c'est docteur là, c'est le ministre de Santé qui a fait tout ça, il a fait. Mais on est pour nous, on est bâtiment neuf, on l'hôpital neuf. On a aussi un meilleur service pour le public dominique. En notre nouvelle, Dominique qui a souffert et puis diabétique foot, qui est tout de suite tapé en assistance médicale, selon un programme que le ministre de Santé a conduit et puis Cuba. Parole celle-là, sorti au ministre de Santé, honorable Dr. Kenneth Adaru. Si nous avons visité pour Cuba. Nous visitons des docteurs de business en médecine. Et nous avons des docteurs de médecine en médecine qui sont Cuba. Il y a combien d'années? Plus que 5 ans de Cuba développé en médecine qui est en Cuba. Et quand nous avons toutes ces études qu'ils ont fait en Cuba, la région est plus loin. Il y a des pays, il y a des pays d'Europe qui commencent à utiliser ça. Ça, c'est pour traiter les gens qui ont des diabétiques foot. Ça, c'est une complication de diabétis. Et c'est étudié. Il y a des gens qui ont fait ça. Ça, 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 diminué. Significamment, l'incidence, l'amputation de gens qui ont souffert avec des diabétis. Et puis finalement, Dominique Bonchet et puis Weston la terre pour célébrer la journée internationale NOS qui célébre Jodéa. En Dominique, le ministre de la Santé collaboré et puis l'association NOS où il y a organisé plusieurs activités tout le long de la semaine. Sala. Quand même si le chef officier NOS, le Tisha Lestrad White, ces activités-là actuellement commencé lundi le 11 mai l'année 2015 
en parmi un grand mess en goodwill et puis compétition public speaking. Wike aussi fait parole qui activité qui mette attention nos qui n'est autant expérience et de changer nos manières pour manager et puis ressources yoni pour délivrer un meilleur service santé bah public là. Mais c'est madame, ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non moins, c'est Marc Fusson Au revoir. Tips on how to stick to your budget up next. Get in and fasten your seatbelt, okay? Mom, why do I have to wear seatbelts? I do not want to. James, when I ask you to fasten your seatbelt, please do as I say. It's for your own safety and protection, okay? Yeah. Protect yourself, protect the child. Always fasten your seatbelt. Crashes can happen at any time. It is better to be safe than sorry. Remember, seatbelts save lives. A message brought to you by the Violence and Injury Surveillance System Committee, in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization. Creating a budget can be a frustrating task, and staying on budget can be even harder. Once you've created your budget, it's important to stick to it. Here's a tip to help you stick to your budget. Determine the amount of your budget that you can afford to save each month and have it direct deposited into your savings account or to your mutual fund. Wherever you decide to keep your savings, make sure you put money into it every month. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gisdominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash GISnewsDominica, and follow our Twitter at GISdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Thanks for watching, and do join us next time on National Focus. <music>